What's up guys, welcome back to DCA. So what we're gonna do in this video is talk about this absolutely chaotic period that we've just experienced over the last few days. So Bitcoin right now has recovered some and we're trading at around $29,100. However, as of you know, even today, we were down as low as $25,300. So we're gonna look at what has happened and you know, try and understand where we're at right now and where we may be headed. Because I'm seeing a lot of people calling, you know, this was the bottom. And so we're going to look at the market and we're going to try and understand whether that's very likely. Because, you know, we've been hearing people calling the bottom, many of the same people that are calling it right here. And, you know, they've been saying that ever since 60K. Ever since, you know, November when we came down from right at around 69K. So we're going to look at the market. We're going to try to understand the market objectively from a data driven perspective, which is what we always do on this channel. Because my opinion, your opinion, our feelings, they don't really matter at the end of the day. What matters is what the data is telling us, what the markets are telling us. And so we're going to look at some different metrics that we've been using to analyze these markets in order to get a better understanding of where we're at and where we may be going. So the first thing that we're going to do, we'll come back to this chart, but the first thing that we're going to do is take a look at this chart here. And what this is, is the realized price for Bitcoin. And if you're unfamiliar with this, the realized price for Bitcoin is essentially, it takes all of the Bitcoin held on the Bitcoin network and it asks, when was the last time that this Bitcoin moved? So in other words, if you bought a Bitcoin at $10,000 in August of 2020. If you bought a Bitcoin at that time for $10,000 and you moved it into your wallet, that would be recorded as that Bitcoin is sitting there at 10K. So what this metric does, it takes all of the Bitcoin on the entire network and says, what's your average price? And so you can see that right now in blue, the average price of all Bitcoin ever moved on the network is $24,000. So the first thing I just wanna quickly point out is this is a glass node feed. So we're actually getting the data from one day prior, and, but we'll look at the current price in a moment as well. But this is one day prior. So when you see 28.9, that's very similar to the price right now. However, it's you know one day old. You'll notice that the average price at 24K, if it's one day old, that doesn't matter because the average price doesn't change on a day-to-day -day basis. It changes over time. We need to think about this realized price as being a very important metric for Bitcoin. And we've been talking about the potential for Bitcoin to head down to this realized price level for a long time now, for months, we've been talking about this. And the reason is simple. So if you own Bitcoin and you are a short-term holder, short-term holders are very likely to sell the asset in relation to very small price moves. So if the price moves 5% up or down, short-term holders are constantly buying and selling the asset. So what that means is they aren't realistically, they're not forming levels of support for the asset. Short-term holders are not. If you come down to their price, you know, their cost basis, they're very likely to be exiting the asset regardless of that within a short amount of time. Hence the fact that they're short-term holders. So these are traders you can think of them as, and they make up a large portion of the, you know, the entire uh, daily volume for Bitcoin. However, when we think about this realized price, this becomes important because we're thinking in terms of long-term holders here. So when the price falls below this realized price in blue, so we're talking when the actual Bitcoin price, so the, you know, the red and green candles here, when it falls below this value, you can think of that as the entire network is at a loss on average, on aggregate. Because think about it, if you own all of the Bitcoin on the, you know, you own all the Bitcoin that's out there, this is showing you the average price that you own it at essentially. And so if you're above your average price, the network as a whole is in profit. But if you're below your average price, then you're at a loss. So these times when the actual price is below the realized price, these are times when the entire network 
is actually sitting at a loss on average. It doesn't mean every individual is at a loss, but it means all holders of Bitcoin, when you add them all up, whether they're profitable or you know sitting at a loss, when you're below this realized price, you're actually the, you know, the entirety of the network is at a loss. So you can see that, you know, back here in 20, 2014 into 2015, we actually fell below this realized price. So that means the network on aggregate became unprofitable. The network was at a loss. And then these are very typically going to be times when you're going to be nearing a bottom for you know a key reason. The reason is that your long-term holders are very unlikely to sell the asset when you reach down to their cost basis. So, you know, a short-term holder, if they get at a 5% loss, they're very likely going to sell. So they're either weak hands or they're traders, you know, whatever it may be. So they're constantly flipping the asset. Long-term holders, on the other hand, these individuals are going to sit on the asset and they're not going to sell you the asset just because you've come down to the price that they bought at. So if you're a long-term holder, let's suppose you bought at, you know, 6,400 6, here in October of 2017, and then the price goes up and you don't sell, let's just suppose, and then it comes back down, you know, and then you get back to your cost basis at 6,400. Well, that long-term holder is very likely, statistically speaking, to continue holding the asset, okay? They're not going to capitulate just because you've come to their price. In fact, there's, you know, these individuals tend to be more likely to buy more of the asset when it comes back to their price because they have long-term faith in the asset. It's why, you know, in spite of having it at 6,400, they didn't sell at 20K or then 15K or then even 10K when it came down. And so what happens is you essentially have a lot of your shorter term holders, people that, you know, bought in January, February, March, et cetera. These individuals are more likely to capitulate. So they're new buyers into the market. They're more likely to capitulate. And then, you know, same thing with even, you know, some of your newer long-term holders, they're statistically speaking, more likely to capitulate. So people that bought back here, maybe they held on, you know, people that bought up at 60K back in 2021, maybe they held on, you know, to 30K and then maybe they held on to 28K and then 26K. But at some point the, you know, panic sets in into the market and the longer of a holder you are, just statistically speaking, the more likely you are to hold, okay? So when we get down, the price gets down to the, the average price that all individuals on the entire network own the asset, you're just running into a place where you have less short-term holders and you have more long-term holders owning the asset. And those long-term holders, as we discussed, become less and less and less likely to sell. You know, you're at a, essentially at a supply shock where there's not enough supply to meet the demand as you get lower and lower, all right? And that's what we've seen in every market cycle. So back here in the 2015 bear market, and then again in the 2018 into the 2019 bear market, then again at the COVID capitulation event. And now here, we got not to our realized price yesterday or today really, we didn't get down to our realized price. We came very close to it at around $25,300. So we got very close to this level that we've been saying to watch for for months now. We got very close to our realized price and we've since got a bounce. So we've since went up to $29,000 where we're sitting at right now. So, you know, I, I think that this is very clear that, you know, the analysis that we've been performing over these months now, you know, it, it ended up panning out. Now that's, you know, just discussing where we're sitting at right now. We're also going to look at what may happen going forward. It's important to understand why these things happen because this price isn't just a, you know, it's not just something random that happens. It's not random that the price turned around right in this zone. The price turned around in this zone because of this fact, because 
the network was approaching a place of unprofitability on aggregate and therefore you know your longer term holders were no longer willing to sell the asset and in fact were willing to step in and buy more there okay so what happened you know as we came down to this level in my opinion was not wildly unexpected so this is you know coming down this low wasn't unexpected nor was getting a bounce near this level unexpected and you know this is all just for the reasons that we've been talking about that we've been talking about here for months and it hasn't been popular you know i've got lots of comments since december when i've been saying that you know this is what we need to watch for it doesn't mean it's definitely going to happen but it's worth considering that you know people keep telling you that bitcoin can never fall below this price never fall below that price never fall below that price but we've been saying on this channel and i've maintained for months now resolutely that you need to be at least cognizant of what your downside potential is because so many channels out there are not being you know they're not being honest or they simply don't have enough market experience to be able to accurately define for you what is within the realm of possibility and and i think this will continue you know the same like we said the same people that have been saying 60k was the bottom 50k was the bottom buy the dip 45k is the bottom buy the dip 40k is the bottom buy the dip you know they're going to sit here and tell you right now 29k is the bottom buy the dip 25k was the bottom buy the dip and you know to, at some point they're going to be right at some point they're going to be right but it's worth investigating is that time right now are they right this time they've been wrong you know a hundred other times all the way dating back to you know right here dating back to november 12th after our top saying you know when we went from 69k down to around 63k by the dip because we're going to 100k we're going to 250k stuff like that these people that just keep saying this you know i think there's so much bad information out there in these markets and people need to understand you know they need to understand what the reality of the situation is and so that's what we're gonna for the you know remaining portion of this video that's what we're going to talk about we're going to talk about where we're at right now and what potentially could happen as you know as we've come down nearly to this realized price level that we've been talking about for months so this is just a graphical representation of the moving averages that we've been talking about you know being absolutely critical to the price action of bitcoin so when you're in blue here and i talked about this in <laughs> i talked about this the day before the crash or two days before the crash i said you need to be careful when we get below this 100 day moving average so just to quickly explain when you're in blue means you're above the 20 week you're above the 50 week and you're above the 100 week moving averages okay so these are bullish times in the market and that's what we've maintained on this channel since day one since the day day first day that my channel started we've maintained when you're above that 20 week you're in a bull market when you drop below it you need to watch out when you drop below the 50 you really need to watch out and when you drop below the 100 you typically head down to the 200 week moving average all right so that's been essentially the bottom of every market cycle so this is a script I created. And by the way, if you're interested, you can uh, you can get this trading view script for free on my Discord channel. So you just go there and there, uh, you know it's available for free there. So when you're above this 20 week moving average, we're in blue. And you can see that in every single market, that leads to a you know a bull market. The price just rapidly goes up over a year, year and a half period, or however long each of these you know, various market cycles has lasted. But when you drop below that 20 week moving average, that's indicated by yellow, okay? And you can see that the price corrects significantly during that time. And that's what we talk about always. Then when you drop below the 50 week moving average, what's happened in every cycle, you drop down to the 100 week moving average. And we saw it back here. We went below the 20 week, got above for a very short amount of time, then went below the 50 week. And then when you're in green and then you transition to red, that means you've dropped below your 100 week. And just two days before the crash, right when we got below the 100 week moving average, 
I came on, I made a video that said, guys, you need to watch out because, you know, none of this stuff means it has to happen again. But what has happened when we drop below that 100 week moving average in past market cycles is we have seen a massive capitulation event. When we drop below that 100 week moving average, we typically capitulate. We said, when you get below the 50, it's relatively calm the market, you go sideways, you go up, you go down. But when you get below that 100, we typically have a capitulation event. Okay. So that happened in each cycle. And what happened? Well, we got below the 100 week moving average. And what did we do? You know, if we just go down to where we, where we made our bottom of this capitulation so far. So we actually went down to 25.3. All right. So right about there nothing unexpected happened here. And we, and we said, we have been saying nothing unexpected is happening, period. Nothing unique is happening in this market cycle. This market cycle is playing out exactly like every other market cycle has played out because ultimately the culmination of all of these events, they may be influenced by exogenous factors. So factors unrelated to cryptocurrency, factors related to the stock market, factors related to the economy, factors related to the Fed, geopolitical events, interest rates, the global pandemic that we just experienced, you know, uh, supply chain issues. All of these factors influence the cryptocurrency market. We do not operate in a vacuum here. And these people that say, you know, because of this price metric that I'm seeing, or, you know, this uh, technical analysis that I'm seeing, this indicates to me that we're going to turn around right here. And they've been saying this for months now, months and months and months, these channels with, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of subscribers have been leading people astray because they, you know, having numerous subscribers on your channel does not equate to having any level of market knowledge. You know, they are not equivalents. And I think a lot of people lose sight of that because they, you know, they all pretty much do the same thing. They all tell you positive things always. Okay. So they're always saying positive things about the market. They're always saying that the market is headed to new all time highs until it's so obvious that, you know, they can't, they simply can't deny the fact that the market is crashing anymore. And then they make it seem like they've been saying that all along. So this is why we've been, you know, kind of warning people for months now. We've been warning people to watch out because a lot of people are out there leading them astray. I've been warning people that it's very likely that if Bitcoin starts to bleed and if this market plays out like it potentially could based on everything we've seen from prior market cycles, based on everything we know about this market, based on everything we know about the economy, that altcoins are going to get annihilated. And that is exactly how it has played out. Bitcoin has got hit and hit hard and altcoins on aggregate have got absolutely wrecked. So this is just sort of, uh, you know, what we've been more or less expecting would happen. You know, you never expect it. You never expect that it's actually going to happen because it's always a shock when it does. But, you know, we, <laughs> we've at minimum been... Uh, speculating that nothing unique is happening here. Everything that's that's occurring at this time is all there. You know, they're all sort of events that have played out many times in the past. And to not learn from historical examples, and to not understand how the market plays out when we start to get into these times of fear, is you know, it's uh, in my opinion, it's it's a bit naive to sort of ignore what we know, because ultimately this is a heavy, you know, a retail heavy market and retail traders are going to act precisely in the same manner in every market cycle. I don't care if it's 1920 or if it's, you know, uh, 2200 retail traders. So individual traders who are, you know, they're not professionals, they're going to act in a reliable manner and the details surrounding each event each sort of capitulation event, they've been a little bit different in each individual cycle, but nonetheless, the, you know, the sort of panic and fear that individuals demonstrate has sort of allowed for these events to play out like this. So if we just come over here 
this is the logarithmic regression curve that we have. And again, this is available for free on my Discord channel. And this is a log curve demonstrating the uh, logarithmic regression curve upper and lower band for the price as well as the realized price, which is that, you know, that metric that we showed a moment ago. So what we need to do then with that said is look at where we're at right now and what may we expect happen. So we'll just put this on the weekly chart here just to kind of, uh, you know, zoom out a bit and look at what's happened in the past. So you can see that we're coming very close to this lower band of the, of the uh, Bitcoin price. All right. So this is the lower band of the price here in this lighter green, this lower level here. And as we get into, or, you know, as we approach this lower band, what we've done in the past is sort of bounced off of it for a time. So you can see we've bounced off of it every single time we've come down to this level. All right. Now, what we've done in the last two cycles back in 2015 and in 2018 and 2019, we bounced off, but then we ultimately ended up going below it. All right. So, you know, what we need to think about is the fact that the, the global economic circumstances are still, you know, demonstrating uncertainty. So we still have a place where many investors, and we're talking both retail and institutional type investors are in a risk off attitude. There's a prevailing risk off attitude in the market. And so we need to consider the fact that even though the price has come down to that realized price, we got to bounce off of it. That doesn't mean that the market is necessarily ready to turn around from here because of the fact that we need to see what happens with the stock market. We need to see what happens with the Fed. We need to see what's going to happen with some of these supply chain issues we're experiencing. Because if the market starts to enter into a recessionary period, I really believe that, you know, there's still a lot of pain ahead because of the fact that, you know, Bitcoin has Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market in general have only existed during basically a general bull market for the stock market. We've only seen the stock market essentially moving up since 2010. There have been several times when we've seen correction. You know, we've seen corrections in the market, but in general, Bitcoin has never lived through a recession. So we haven't really been battle tested in that regard. And when I say recession, I'm not talking about what we in the crypto market call a bear market. I'm talking about a actual general market recession. We've had small pullbacks for a limited amount of time, but we've never went through a period of, you know, two, three years where the markets have been down and, you know, the economy has been terrible. The economy has in general been pretty good ever since 2010. So if we enter into one of those periods and, you know, I think there's at least a non-zero chance that we do. In fact, I would say it's much, you know, probably much greater than that because of, you know, all of the things that we've mentioned, especially when you have geopolitical events like Ukraine and Russia and potential energy concerns in Europe as a result, when you have all of these issues culminating at the same time, you have to appreciate the fact that, you know, the economy could head into a period where we're seeing a slowdown for, you know, it, potentially up to years. And if that happens, the crypto market has never been around during a time like that. And so to say that 25K, for some reason, just because we had a capitulation event, that was the bottom. Well, we've seen in the past that, you know, after some of these capitulation events that the market can continue to trend down for some time. So you had capitulations here in 2014 and the market has been trending down and then it, what's it do? It trends down some more. And so, you know, just to say that because we went to 25K and because you know, we've turned around and are trading right now at 28.8, that that was the bottom. I think that's excessively premature. And I think, uh, you know, if things start to, or, you know, if things continue to look ugly in the markets, you could see this get much worse from here. And so, you know, just like we've said many times, if Bitcoin continues to bleed and just because we've bounced up a couple thousand dollars, you know, 
is not a you know it's not a it's not a sign that this market is definitively ready to turn around doesn't mean we can't we can do anything you know anything can happen at any time in these markets they're unpredictable however we can always look at what's likely to happen statistically based on the data that we're seeing and you know i would just say that and i you know i would suggest to you to go study some examples of the past you know we've talked about it many times here we've talked about the fact that if this market continues to you know bleed if the economy starts to weaken if you know unemployment rates start to increase you could see this you know the price of bitcoin and the total value of the crypto market you could see much further declines than we've been looking at so far it's not to say that it's going to happen like i said but i i especially just want to and you know this is something i've tried to make clear on this channel i've made numerous videos about this point especially if this market continues down and if we see Bitcoin continue to fall, you're going to see very likely the majority of altcoins get absolutely annihilated. And you, all you have to do is go back to 2018 to see a perfect example of this. Go back and look at a historical uh, market cap ranking of your top altcoins back in 2018. And see how many of them you've ever even heard of before. So you could go to coin market cap to look at this and see if you can even recognize 80% of them because the majority of altcoins that you know of right now that seem like they're good projects, potentially, very, very likely are not going to be around in the next market cycle. And if we head into, if we were to head into a recession here, a true market recession, I think you're going to see the cryptocurrency market come out the other side with a completely different look than it has right now. So I think we're entering into a period of true battle testing for this market. And I think there's going to be, you know, continued shakeup in a way that a lot of people aren't expecting. And this is something that we've been talking about over and over and over again on this channel is that I think you have more downside risk than people are giving it credit for. You know, it just it just goes to show that a lot of people, they're so indoctrinated with the culture of hopium on social media networks that they, they aren't mentally prepared for what can actually happen. And I think as an investor, you need to understand what your actual downside risk is because it's much more, uh, you know, I think there's much more downside than a lot of people are discussing or willing to admit because there's you know there's a uh, you, in, there's an incentive as a content creator to only say positive things because saying positive things gets more views gets more subscribers etc but ultimately you know i'm not here to get the maximum number of subscribers i'm here to get individuals who care about investing who care about understanding the market who care about you know taking a realistic approach to these markets i'm here to try and help individuals like that sort of understand these markets in the best way that I possibly can and sort of prepare them mentally. Ultimately, each individual has to make up their own mind what they're going to do. And we've been warning that you need to be careful in this market. The climate is such that, you know, we could be in for a real shock going forward. And I think just because we've had this move here, that certainly does not necessarily have to be the end of this bear market because there is a significant degree of potential downside left in the market in my opinion it's all going to be based on what the economy does though so we're going to have to continue to watch that if the economy recovers if we wake up tomorrow morning and Nas the nasdaq is up 10 percent the, the crypto market's going to go on a huge rally and if that continues throughout the year and into next year then so be it the market is going to rally but to expect that this market is going to operate in isolation of the general market, I think is naive. And I think uh, anyone telling you that simply has no, you know, they have no concept of how markets work. Technical analysis in and of itself is useless if you're ignoring the bigger picture, if you're ignoring the macro picture. So this is just what I want to talk about, guys. I, I just want to help some people understand where we're at 
why some of this happened and potentially what could happen from here. So if you're curious, um, the bottom of this reg regression curve, which we have went down to in the last two market cycles, just for some historical perspective, the bottom of this curve will likely be at around 15 K. Now, I don't know if we will actually go down to the bottom of this curve, but you know, it's at least worth considering where it's at now. And if you want to get this script or this one, they're available for free on trading view on my discord channel. So that's it for this one, guys. Hopefully it helped. And thank you for watching. And until next time, as usual, see ya.